Hey guys, thanks for joining us today. We would love to hear about how God is using this ministry in your life. So please take a moment and send us your story in an email to amen at turningpoint.cc. And if God has used this ministry to touch you in any way, we want to encourage you to partner with us financially. Help us to continue to deliver God's Word around the world to people just like you. You can visit us at turningpoint.cc to find the giving option that best works for you. And thanks again for joining us, and enjoy today's service on demand. Come on one more time. If you know it's good, can you give me one more big hand clap of praise this morning? Praise Lord, if you could stand with us this room to Joel chapter 1, verse 14. Joel chapter 1, uh, verse number 14. Joel chapter 1, verse 14. It says, Consecrate a fast. Call a fast, the scripture said. And call a sacred assembly. Gather the elders, the inhabitants of the land, into the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord. Notice he said, there's a time when you should call a fast. Call a sacred assembly, a sacred season. And so for the next few moments, I want to speak to you about what is fasting and nine reasons why you should fast over the next 21 days with us. Father, in Jesus' name today, speak to us. Lord, teach us your word today, and I pray, Lord, the anointing would just hit this room like never before, and Lord, that because of this revelation, we would see great manifestation in our lives. For it's in the name of Jesus we pray. And could you give him the best hand clap you've given him all morning? <laughs> Praise the Lord. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord if you can. I want you to understand that in, in simple uh, Bible terms, if you take a notes or maybe you say, I don't really know what fasting is all about. In simple terms, fasting according to the scriptures is when you push back the physical, such as food, and you do it in an effort to gain something more spiritual from God. Fasting in its simplest terms is when you push back the plate, you push back the food, and you deny your flesh and you say, God, I'm going to deny my flesh so that I might have more a spiritual experience with you and believe for more blessings and favor to flow on my life. And that's what we're doing uh, during this 21-day fast. We're following the scriptures when he said, call a fast, call a, a sacred assembly and, and fast and believe that God's going to do some incredible stuff in your life and in my life. And according to the Bible, there are nine reasons why you and I should fast. There are nine reasons according to the Bible as to why you and I should fast together. And the first one is called the disciples fast. It's found in Mark chapter 9 in verse 29. The Bible said there was a father whose child was stricken with an evil spirit. And this evil spirit had taken over this child. And, and the father went to the disciples and asked him to pray for his child. That the evil spirit would leave the child. And the scripture said that the disciples, they prayed, but nothing happened. Happened. They prayed and they could not get the evil spirit out of the boy. And so the father who loved his son would not quit when they couldn't get the evil spirit out. He takes his son to Jesus and Jesus records in Mark 9, 29, he rebukes the evil spirit out of the young boy. And he said, they asked him, they said, why in the world could we not do what you just did? He said, this kind can only come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. There are some things things in your life that the only way you're going to overcome it is it's not just enough to pray about it but there are some there are some evil spirits there are some addictions there are some bondages that will only respond whenever you mix prayer and fasting together there are some devils that you're only going to defeat whenever you fast and you pray according to the bible because let's be real in here we all have some sin in our life that we've tried to whip but we have not been able to whip it. Come on, somebody. If we were all real up in this place, we all have sin in our life. We all have something that we've tried to 
to get rid of. We prayed about it. We cried. We worshiped. We were genuine at the altar. And we said, God, I don't want to do this no more. God, I don't want to flip them a bird no more. And then you turn around and flip them two birds. Come on, somebody. You pray about it. Say, God, I'm not going to cuss them out no more. And then you cuss them out even more. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. We all have sin that we've tried to get rid of. We all have besetting sin, the scripture said, that we've tried to deal with, but we can't seem to whip it. We've tried to pray. Prayer didn't work. We've tried to worship. Worship didn't work. We tried coming to church. Coming to church didn't work. Why? Because the Bible said there are some things in your life, the only way you're going to get rid of it is not just when you pray, but when you mix prayer with fasting. And I came to tell somebody this week on this Sunday that if you really want freedom, if you want to put the addiction down, if you want to put the bondage down, I believe and pray over you in the name of Jesus that during this 21 day fast, the things you've tried to get freedom from, you're going to get freedom. Why? Because this kind comes out by prayer and fasting. If you want that kind of freedom over your family, give God a praise right here and say, God, send freedom to my home. Send freedom to my family. Send freedom to my children in the name of Jesus. The second one's the Ezra fast. The Ezra fast is found in the book of Ezra, chapter 8, verse 21. The Bible said that Ezra had been given, catch this, 7,500 pounds of gold and 25 tons of silver from the king. The king gave Ezra and his family 7,500 pounds of gold and 25 tons of silver with the expectation that he was to take it back to Jerusalem. He loaded up all of these beautiful possessions, the silver and the gold, and he was to take it back to Jerusalem. But Ezra had a problem. Ezra's problem was that in that day in Bible times, there would be thieves that would be along the road and they would hide out behind bushes and trees and they would look for people who had loaded down carts and they would steal your gold, they would steal your, your silver, they would even steal your children and sell them into slavery because the enemies were waiting to try to take people who were on a journey. But, I, but the Bible said that Ezra called a fast and he fasted and he prayed. He pushed back the chicken. He pushed back the KFC. He pushed back the Krispy Kreme donuts. He pushed back the, the, the hot sauce. He pushed back all of that beautiful stuff and he fasted for three days. Why? Because he wanted God to protect his family. He wanted God to protect his children. He wanted God to protect his resources. And I'm declaring over you in 2016 through this fast that God is going to protect you because there is an enemy called the devil who walks around like a roaring lion and I know we don't think he's real today but the devil is very real and he's very powerful and he's after you, he's after your children, he's after your marriage he's after your mind and he wants to kill you, steal everything you got and destroy everything good in your life but I got some bad news for the devil because there's some crazy people at turning point who are fasting and praying during in the next 21 days and we're believing God to protect our children we're believing God to protect our y'all help me up in there we're believing God to protect us and the enemy may come in but he can't touch us why because the Lord is protecting his people who fast and they pray the third one is the Samuel fast the Bible said that in 1 Samuel chapter 7 verse 3 that Samuel the great prophet called the nation to a fast he called them to a fast because the Philistines were preparing to attack Israel and Samuel decided to declare a fast. Why? Not just for protection, but for national revival. He was praying for a revival to hit his nation. He was praying for the people of his community to turn their face back to God. And I know I'm not supposed to say this kind of stuff behind the pulpit, but somebody's got to tell the truth and put the devil to shame that what the United States of America needs in 2016 is not a Republican or a Democrat or the House or the Senate. What the United States of America needs is a nation that has revival sweep across our country again. We need dads that lead our family in prayer. We need moms that know how to worship. Come on, somebody. We need family time around the dinner table where we pray and say, God, thank 
thank you for this food. Thank you for protecting us. And I'm praying during this 21-day fast that God would hit the United States of America with a revival like we've never seen before. I'm not just fasting for the home of Justin Mitchell. I'm fasting for Wayne County. I'm fasting for Jessup, Georgia. I'm fasting for the United States of America and saying, God, we need a revival. We need a people that love you again because I still believe 2 Chronicles 7, 14, that said, if my people who are called by my name will pray and humble themselves and seek my face, God said, I'll heal from heaven. I will heal their land. I will forgive their sin. Somebody give your God a praise if you believe revival is going to flow through your family. I'm not just going to come to church to come to church. I'm coming to church because I got revival. I'm expecting God to move. I'm expecting miracles, signs, and wonders. Come on, somebody. I want revival in my home. He prayed for revival. There's thousands of people who just go to church to go to church. I am done with just going to church to go to church. I want revival. I want miracles, signs, and wonders. I want everything this Bible says you and I can have. The Bible said we can lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Come on, somebody. I want to see heart attack dry up. I want to see diabetes leave the building. I want to see depression lift off of people. I want to see cancer. People get touched in a service and they go back to the doctor and say, well, it was here in this one, but it, it ain't here. Come on, I want to give God a praise if you want some revival in 2016. I want revival. The fourth reason why you should fast is something I'm going to call the Elijah fast. And I believe it's one of the most powerful reasons why you need to fast. Because the Bible said that there was a wicked woman named Jezebel. She was a diabolical and ruthless leader whose main goal was to wipe out God's preachers. Her main target was to kill anyone who preached that God was the only God. And so she put out a message to everyone that her, her goal was to kill the preacher by the name of Elijah. Elijah gets word that Jezebel wants him to be killed. And he, the Bible said he runs up underneath a tree. And low self-esteem hits him. Depression hits him. Suicidal thoughts hit him. He even begins to pray, God, I'm tired of living. Just let me die. This is the same God that called down fire from heaven. This is the same God that saw, that saw God do miracles, signs. and This is the same man. And now he's up underneath a tree crying, asking God to kill him. Because even strong people cry sometimes. Now you look straight ahead because you don't want nobody to know you came to church with to know it. But if you be honest, every now and then, you all fight battles. And the greatest battles we fight are not external, they're internal. It's the battle you fight in your own mind. And, and the sweeping epidemic we have in the, in the United States of America today is we've got low self-esteem. And at unprecedented heights, we have people who look themselves in the mirror and say, I'm ugly, I'm too fat, I'm too wide. Nobody could ever love this. We think suicidal thoughts. We think taking our own lives. We think that we're, we're worthless. There's no hope. Depression sweeps in. But the Bible said that God called Elijah on a fast and fasted for 40 days and 40 nights as he returned to the mountain called Horeb and the Bible said that while he was fasting that God took the depression away he took the suicidal thoughts away and he gave Elijah courage he gave him hope he gave him a love for himself and I'm saying listen I know you ain't gonna say nothing right here because you don't know nobody to know it but I pray over you right now if you battle with low self esteem or a low self image I pray over you right now that that would be broken off of your life that God would renew your mind right now while I'm preaching that you would say I feel good about me I am fearfully and wonderfully made and while we're fasting and praying God's going to break it off of you in the name of Jesus if you believe it can do it somebody shout amen today yeah. 
The fifth one is the widow's fast. How many he got? Nine. Oh, we almost there, somebody. The fifth one is the widow's fast. The widow's fast is found in 1 Kings chapter 17. There was a widow woman who was going through a time that was worse than the Great Depression. All she had left was a little bit of cake mix in her cupboard. And the Bible said she was preparing to take that cake mix, make some cake. She was going to feed her and her children. The Bible said she was preparing to die. It was that bad. Depression like they'd never seen before. People were starving and hungry and broke. The economy had bankrupt. But God sent a man of God by the name of Elijah to her house. And Elijah said, woman, give me the cake mix. And she had a decision to make, just like you do. Do I fast or do I not fast? Do I eat my cake or do I give my cake away? Come on, somebody. Do I fast or do I not fast? Do I help God's man or do I help myself? Do I give my stuff away and believe that somehow, some way, God's going to bring it back to me in greater measure? Or am I... and bless somebody else with it. He may bless you to give it to a food bank. He may, he may bless, he may prompt you to give it to the children's ministry, to the youth ministry, to the missions field. God is going to prompt you during these 21 days to help bless somebody else. But catch this, when you give it to them, don't expect them to be your reward. You need to do it as unto the Lord and the Lord will reward those who do it unto Him. Come on somebody. Because what you help make happen for others God will help make it happen for you. Somebody who knows I'm preaching the truth, at least say amen right here. If you know that when you give, God will give back to you, press down, shaking together, running over. Yeah. Isaiah 58, verse 6, said it like this. Is this fast? He was speaking of this fast. He said, as fasting, is it not to share your bread with the hungry? That you bring to your house the poor who are cast out. The widow's fast is about helping other people. The sixth fast is the Paul fast. The Bible said that Paul was a man who persecuted Christians. He would seek them down, persecute them, hunt them, kill them, beat them. And the Bible said that while he was riding to Damascus that, that God shone such a bright light. He lit up the heavens. A light lit up the sky. Blinded uh, Paul for three days. He fell off his horse. He hit the ground. And the Bible said that he was blinded for three days because of this. And catch this in verse 9. The Bible said that he ate no food. He drank no drink for three days. Why? Because Paul had a decision to make. He had just had his life changed. And now he was about to change occupations. He was now about to switch from being a Christian persecutor to a Christian preacher. Can I get a witness in here? And he had a major decision to make. Do I follow my God or do I keep doing what I've always been doing? And listen, whenever you find yourself with tough decisions, when you're on a journey and you don't know what decision to make, you don't know whether you should take this job or not take this job. Should I do this? Should I not do that? Should I go here? Should I go there? Should I sign this contract? 
why should I not sign this contract? You need to fast and pray. Because when you fast, God will help you make decisions. God will guide you. God will speak to your heart. God will put the right people in your life. He'll take you to the right places. Come on, somebody. He will guide you when you fast and when you pray. When you fast, God gives you divine direction. When you fast, God will lead you and tell you where to go and what to do. And listen, I'm praying over these next 21 days. If you own a business, if you have a company, that while you're fasting and praying that God would give you supernatural direction, not just for you, but for your business in the name of Jesus. The seventh one, we're almost there, is the Daniel fast. It's the one we're corporately doing as a church body. The Daniel fast, in its simplest terms, is a partial and prolonged fast that lasts for 21 days. It's a fast where you eat no meat. Help me, somebody. You eat no sweets. Dear Jesus, no Dr. Pepper. No breads, no marita. Come on, somebody. And all you drink is nothing but water for 21 days. No meats, no sweets, no breads, and all you drink is water for 21 days. Daniel did this. Why? The Bible said that when Daniel fasted for 21 days, according to Daniel 10, it said that he ate none of the king's food, but according to Daniel 1 verse 15, because of his fast, because he put God first and fasted for 21 days, the Bible said that he appeared better and fatter in flesh than all the young men who ate the portion of the king's food. The Daniel's fast brings health and healing and prosperity to you. Come on, somebody. When you fast, God says, I'll bring health, healing, and prosperity to you. I, I know I'm crazy and I lost my mind, but somebody got to be crazy and I might as well wear the t-shirt. Come on, somebody. But I'm praying that while you fast over the next 21 days, I've seen this happen. I, I pray and believe that while you're fasting over the next 21 days, that heart attacks would reverse. That diabetes would leave your body. That arthritis would dry up. Come on, somebody. That your blood pressure would go back to normal. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. That cancer would leave your body. That migraines would leave. That headaches would leave you. That the sores in your back would leave. That God would heal you while you fast. Preacher, do you really believe God's a healer? Oh, yes, I do. I believe God is a healer because by his stripes we are healed. And the Bible said Daniel was healed. He was healthy. He was whole. He was blessed. And if you want health and healing and prosperity in your family, send up a praise right here and say, God, send it to my home. Send health to my home. Send healing to my home. Send prosperity to my home in 2016 in the name of of Jesus. The eighth one, second to the last, is found in Matthew chapter 9. I call it the John the Baptist fast. The Bible says, according to Matthew, that John the Baptist was a devout man of God who fasted many days. He was on the Nazarite diet which meant he fasted alcohol all the time. And that's a word for somebody in this room. Come on, somebody. All he ate was locust and wild honey. All he ate was locust and wild honey. He was a man who fasted. And because he fasted, God put favor on his life. The Bible said he had more favor with his generation than anybody else. Because when you fast, God will put favor on your life. And you might say, preacher, what is favor? Favor is when God makes stuff happen to you that you could have never made happen by yourself. Come on, somebody. Favor is when God puts you in places that you don't, you don't deserve to be in them places, but favor puts you there. Favor is when doors open up that you didn't even have the keys to open up the door to begin with. Y'all ain't going to help me up in there. Favor is when God sends increase to your home that you don't deserve. Favor is when you get picked for the promotion when the other guy should have got the promotion. 
promotion. Y'all ain't going to help me up in here. Favor is when God blesses your children. Oh, y'all ain't going to help. Favor is when God makes stuff happen for you that you could have never made happen all by yourself. And I came to encourage somebody. I'm about to move to number nine. I'm about to preach the last one. But I need to encourage somebody because some of y'all are frustrated because God wasn't talking to you in 2015. You say, God's been silent in 2015. I prayed, but I ain't heard him. I came to church, but I ain't heard him. I came to tell you that when God puts favor on your life and he quits talking to you, the reason why he quit talking to you is because he's talking to your blessing. Come on, somebody. And I don't care if God quits talking to me as long as he's talking to my blessing y'all ain't gonna help me up in here I say God in 2016 talk to my blessing talk to my healing talk to my favor talk to my open door talk to my next season if you want God to talk to your blessing and send it to your life give God a praise right here and we moving on to number nine while we should fast and pray Y'all got to excuse me because I need some favor. Y'all, have, I need some favor on my life. Favor on my daughter. Favor on my wife. Favor on my... God, do things I could never do all by myself. The Bible said because he fasted and prayed, he had divine favor with his generation. Because he fasted and prayed. And the last point, the last reason why you should join us on this 21-day fast, and I'm closing. The ninth reason is what I want to call the Esther fast. The Bible says that Esther was a beautiful woman who was preparing to go before the king. And while she was preparing to go before the king, there was a wicked man by the name of Haman who was preparing to kill her and her family because of their belief in God. The guy was so wicked that in his backyard he built the very gallows that he was going to hang them on and watch them die as they were hung. He was a wicked man. And the only reason he wanted them killed was because they believed in God. Because they worshipped God. So Esther caught wind of this enemy's plan and, and the Bible says in Esther 4.16 that she said, go gather all of the Jews. Go gather all of God's people and fast for me. Don't eat, don't drink for three days. My maids and I, we're going to fast too. And I'm going to go before the king. Now you got to realize something. It was dangerous for her to go before the king without being invited. Because if you just showed up in the king's house and you weren't invited, they could kill you on the spot. Only people who were invited into the king's presence could come. But she said, I'm going to fast and pray that God would put favor on my life with the king and he would protect me. And so the Bible said they fasted for three days. And somewhere during the fast, she got the king's attention. And I came to tell you that somewhere during this 21-day fast, you're going to get the king's attention. Good God, am I... You gonna get the? It might be why you praying in your car. I don't know, but you gonna get the king's attention. It might be why you cutting somebody's. You gonna get the king's attention. It might be why you clicking on the computer. You gonna get the king's attention, and favors gonna show up on your life. And the Bible said she went before the king. She told the king about Haman's plan to kill her and her family. And catch this. When you get the king's attention through fasting, what the devil tried to kill you with, the king will turn around and kill what was trying to kill you. Y'all ain't gonna help me. The king had Haman hung on the very thing he was trying to kill Esther and her family with. And I came to, I'm not preaching to everybody, but I'm talking to somebody up in this building. In 2015, something tried to kill your family. Something tried to kill your marriage. Something tried to come through your house. Something tried to cause division on the job. It tried to kill you. But I got a word from the Lord for you on this first day of the sacred season that the weapon may form, but it shall not prosper. And God in 2000.
and 16. He's going to take yeah. what the devil tried to kill you with. And he's going to kill the devil with it. Come on, somebody. Somebody give your God a praise if you believe him for victory, favor, and protection over your house this year. Stand with me all over this room. Listen. I'm imploring you. You say, preacher, you sound like you're begging. I am, because I know this works. We were, on a, we were on a fast when God provided a half a million dollar check for this building. Amen. You can't tell me fasting don't work. Come on, somebody. We were on a fast when God paid for this property in its entirety. No debt. He paid for it all. We were on a fast. Preacher, that's a coincidence. All I know is since I've been fasting and praying, I have coincidences all the time. Come on, somebody. All the time. Coincidences, blessings, I need them. Come on, somebody. So I'm calling you on this 21-day fast for you, for your family, for our nation, for our community, for our church. We need revival. We need favor. We need God's protection. And Jesus said, you read it, Mark 9, 29. Jesus said, there's only some things you're going to get when you fast and when you pray. When you fast and when you pray. And so before we go, before we dismiss, we're going to give an opportunity for membership. But before we do, if you're in this place and you'd say, God, I'm not going to. I'm not going to be lazy in my walk with you in 2016, but I'm going to commit to you like I never have before. I'm going to fast. I'm going to pray. I'm going to bring my family to church. If that's you, would you just take 60 seconds and throw your hands up? Maybe grab your wife's hand if she's beside you, your husband, your children. And would you worship together right here and say, our family is going to serve the Lord this year. Our family, we're going to pray together more. Our family, we're going to read the Bible together in the living room. So we are going to serve. As for me and my house in 2016, we're going to serve the Lord. Come on, can you worship, sing it, just for 60 seconds. Declare this over your home. Maybe you need to rededicate your life. Maybe you need to accept Him as your Savior for the first time. But maybe you say, Pastor, I'm not where I need to be with Jesus on this first day of the year, but I want this year to be different. Will you pray for me? Since you're praying, would you pray for me? I need Him this year. If that's you, I'm not going to ask you to come down, but would you just raise your hand right where you and say, Pastor, pray for me. I see that hand, hands up almost in every section. Pastor, pray for me. i got to get some things right between me and Jesus on this first Sunday of the year. I want you to put your hand on your heart. I want everyone in the room to do this, but especially those that just raised your hand. I think I seen about 16 hands go up. 
I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say it loud and separate. Say, Lord Jesus, I need you. I admit I'm a sinner. I've messed up. But I believe you died for me. I believe you shed your blood for me. And I'm asking you to wash my heart. Give me a brand new start this year. I confess you as my Savior. I'm committed to you. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Y'all, I've seen about 16 hands. Can we just give God a quick hand clap of praise? All those online that just prayed that prayer. Listen, if you prayed the prayer, I want to give you the tip how you stay strong in this thing. You got to keep coming to church. You can't just come on New Year's and Christmas and Easter. Come on, you got to come every week. Join with believers and you get stronger. Get you a Bible. If you don't have a Bible, we'll get you one. Stay in the Word. Praise and worship. Come on Sundays and Wednesdays. If you, if you do that, you're going to get stronger and God's going to bless you. Amen, somebody? I said He's going to bless you if you'll do that. So, so keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. But listen, before we go, we had some folks in first service that became a part of our local church family. Maybe you're in this room today and you say, man, what better way on the first Sunday of the year to, to, to join the Turning Point family? If you're in this room today and you say, I want to become a part of this local church family. I love this place. And I just want to come and covenant with it. I, I want to join it be a member. Would you just step out real quickly if that's you? If you say, I want to join this place. I love, I love the mission. I love the vision. I want God to use me. Can you all clap? There's people coming down. They're coming. Yes, Lord. Blake, I'm proud of you, buddy. I got to give you some skin. Proud of you guys. Listen, I want us, before we go, this is going to be our dismissal prayer. We're going to pray for these precious people. Because I don't know if you realize this, there's hundreds of people on this campus. We have two services. We have our internet audience. It takes a whole bunch of volunteers to make this thing work. Can somebody say amen? It takes a whole bunch of us working together, serving Jesus. And I believe God's going to use all of these precious men and women up here to do something great in this local body. So would you stretch your hands this way? This is going to be our dismissal prayer. I'd love to, if you're a first-time visitor, I'd love to meet you at the bright orange tent. But I want to pray for these as we welcome them into our church family. Father, today in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for these precious group of men and women that have stepped down, Lord, to come and covenant with this place. And I pray, Lord, that you would bless them today. Lord, I lay my hands on them, God, asking you to stir up every gift inside of them. God, stir up every gift to serve. God, stir up every gift, God, to, Lord, make a difference for your kingdom in the name of Jesus. God, stir up a gift, Lord, to be a great witness in this community of your love, your acceptance, and your forgiveness. Lord, today I bless their families today, Lord. Lord, I bless them, Lord, that you would just touch them in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, I just pray for favor. God, that you would do great and mighty things in them and through them today. God, let this be the year that they see the hand of the Lord move like never before, even in their own life and in their church. We bless them and we welcome them into this local church family. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. You are dismissed. We'll see you Wednesday.